Okay, it's a beautiful day out here today. Nice and cool. Seems like a good day to do a video. I haven't done one in a while. So uh, we're going to concentrate on making just a simple lance-shaped blade like these three over here on the right. These are some examples I did uh, last couple of days. We're going to use aboriginal tools, hammer stones, moose billets, and I've got a bone pressure flaker. I'll show you a little bit more about this in a minute. I'm going to use this spall over here and uh, the focus will be to concentrate on uh, platforms, discuss some strategies for using uh, continuous platforms and that sort of thing. Okay, this is a picture of a, uh, an authentic hafting tool, hafted uh, bone pressure flaker from the southwest. And I believe it's bone anyway, it looks like it, and it was uh, hafted to a wooden handle. So that's where I got the idea to go ahead and make something similar to it. And this works really well. I'm using cow bone. Uh, these two examples up here in the top, these are really interesting. These were sent to me from a guy in uh, Argentina. And uh, you can see where the tips have been sharpened. And they were probably hafted it to a, a handle similar to that. I really like the use of bone. This works really well. And we'll get into that a little bit too when we start. It's kind of an interesting picture over here. It shows one of these old boys from the southwest desert out here. And he's napping on the ground. Apparently pressure flaking in his hand. Okay, we're using uh, Oregon Dacite again. This is some stuff I got up in Oregon last month. It's plain old spall. We've got uh, some mass over here that we've got to remove. Some mass over here from the bulb. A lot of thin edge over here. So initially, we'll, we've got an edge all the way around this thing, but we want to prepare that edge, so get rid of the really thin edges. Start removing some of this mass. So we'll just start out here. get rid of these thin sharp edges initially partly just so I don't cut myself when I'm flipping this thing around but mostly to build up the strength of the edges so that we can uh, start removing flakes on them later this is all real thin in here might as well just bring it in a little bit to get rid of this mass right in here. I'll bring this edge up, run one over in here. What I'm trying to do initially is just flatten the thing, get rid of the, uh, the large areas of mass, and get it fairly flat so that I can start setting up some more or less continuous platforms and uh, there's a strategy that works pretty well when you're using these straight continuous edge platforms and we'll get into that when we get to that point right now we just gotta flatten it out a little bit you need to breathe these sharp edges here Now comes a big one. Sort of an isolated platform right there. Thicken that edge just a little bit. It's too thin. It's important to braid it. Now kind of a snap. Now we've got some mass right in here. We'll set one up and drive one off over in this direction. Break it real well. 
you don't abrade those edges, they're going to collapse. That's what allows you to do that. mass over there we need to remove. I think we'll get this first. Of that off of there. So it's getting nice and flat over here. You get a flat, a little bit of a concavity. You still got some mass over here. So I think we'll drive one off in this direction right now. Pretty soon we'll get into our continuous straight edge platforms and show you what that's all about. They really work well for antler. real thick so these these thick areas like that can be kind of problematic. I think I'll run one over in here and try and get rid of some of that right there so that I don't lose a lot of length dealing with that thick area. Okay, part of it. Try and run it right along like that. braiding here because I'm not removing large thin flakes. I'm just removing uh, short steep flakes. In those cases the edge is strong enough you don't need to braid but when you get into those longer flakes like that you need to make sure the edge is strong enough to withstand the blow and not collapse and that's what a braiding is all about. A little bit of a mass in here we'll just take one uh, small flake right in there, thin that down now. Okay, we still got this area right in here. I think we'll uh, we'll go for it. So we'll bring this edge up in this direction over here so that we can start removing some flakes and get rid of some of that. And I'll start with the big flakes here, here, and here. I want to space them out pretty far especially in the early stages like this because if you put them too closely spaced together they tend to dive into one another and what you want is for them to be far enough apart so that ridges remain between them and for the next set of flakes those ridges can be utilized for additional thinning. If you put them too close together they dive into one another and sometimes the surface is real smooth and it lacks ridges. This needs to be braided a little bit more here. 